and now I'm getting ready to launch on the Facebook Live platform. Mm -hmm. And then you can go in and launch on your Facebook Live platform. Oh, okay. I may not. I may just do a watch party from my phone because if I do it from my computer, they may like, they may act up. Okay. Whatever. Good day, everyone, and welcome to a private discussion that we're having with Ms. Kiana Nelson. We are talking about healing through beauty, and Kiana is the founder of Beauty Redefined LLC, but we wanted to, after cross-cultural talks, open up an opportunity, an open discussion that we're having about the time that we're in, a time of trauma and loss and uncertainty and who better in my opinion to be able to talk about that than Kiana Nelson. Kiana has waded the waters of life with grace, class, and beauty all in one and so I really wanted her to share her story with you. So come on, come all cozy up and get you some good information about this titan, this beauty, this joy, my very, very, very good sister friend, Kiana Nelson. Welcome, Kiana. Thank you so much, Robin, for having me. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, so, Kiana, let's get down, let's get right on it because we really want to talk about healing, this concept of healing and healing through beauty, and you really know what it is like to need to press through that and to talk about really what that means. But I first want to have people know who you are. So why don't you just start by telling everybody a little bit about yourself, where you're from, where you went to school, and all that jazz. Okay. Um, well, hi, everybody in Facebook land. Um, I am Kiana Nelson. Um, let's see. I know I'm Kiana Nelson. So it's really exciting. I'm newly married. Yes. Um, it was three months on Friday. Three whole months. <laughs> Shall we making it through the corona? <laughs> The Rona weddings are out here. Um, but yes, newly married, Kiana Nelson. Um, let's see a little bit about me um, from everywhere. I'm kind of from the Richmond, um, Chesterfield, Henrico area. Um, I graduated from Midlothian High School, which is um, in the county of Chesterfield, but in the town of Midlothian. Um, I, yeah, the town, it's a town, I didn't know. <laughs> Um, let's see, I received my undergraduate degree at Virginia State University, go Trojans, um, in public relations, mass communication with a concentration of PR. Um, and then I received my master's at, uh, at VCU, Virginia Commonwealth University, um, with a, a master's of science in strategic public relations. So those are, those are my academic accolades and background. Um, I'm the oldest of two. I have a younger sister um, who is just like the best little rock star sister there is. 
Um, let's see. I currently work at my alma mater. I work at VCU. I work um, at the Center on Health Disparities um, as the uh, program coordinator for our research training programs. And so what I do with that is I just help um, do all of the administration for our, our trainees and our scholars as they are going through their scientific careers. Um, let's see what else. And um, let's get away from work. I got some passions, things that I'm interested in. <laughs> Talking to um, everybody. Absolutely, yes. So um, things that I'm very passionate about is my ministry. Um, I'm a member of the Leviticus RVA Church in Richmond. And so I'm very, very passionate about ministry work. Um, I'm passionate about women's work, um, working with women, helping women actually, you know, actualize, self-actualize and find um, the best versions of themselves to, to do the hard work, dig deep and see what's there. I um, mean, really truly excavate the beauty that's inside of them so we can be our most authentic and unique self. Um, you know, in this time of social justice, I, I'm finding a little social justice footing as well. So it's a lot, it's a lot to me. I'm very excited. I'm very happy um, to be here um, with you all and to be here with Robinette. So I uh, was just a little bit about me. <laughs> That was phenomenal. Thank mm -hmm. you. Pardon me, I had to step away. I had a mom emergency. Mm. With your our shared daughter, Madison. Yeah. <laughs> shared not really. I know, not really. <laughs> kiss her All right. So <laughs> thank you for sharing such um such good information about yourself. So why don't you also tell everybody because we're talking about beauty as well, and you're beautiful. Well, thank you. Well, you know, it's the inside out, but like really you're cute and you know it. Kiana's one of those ones who'll say she, she's cute and she knows it. It's a very true statement. <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit about your passion for beauty? What does it mean to you? Um, my passion for beauty really stemmed from, um, as a child, my, my first um, image of beauty was my mother. I remember very vividly as a young girl sitting in the bathroom with her when she's getting ready for work or she and my dad were going on a date. Like, you know, they were always going on dates, <laughs> leaving us with a babysitter or something, um, you know, when she would be getting ready. And it was just, I think just the process of beautification always intrigued me um, just to see the different steps and the different women in my life. Every All women in my, in my life are it's very beautiful, but they all just have a process that they go to, um, that they go through rather, when they're getting ready to go out, whether you're going to work, if you're just running to the store, like there's a beautification process that we as women go through. So really my mother was like my first um, like taste of it, getting to see it. Um, and she was also a Mary Kay consultant. So I grew up in beauty. I grew up in knowing like skincare and the importance of it. Um, and later on in my life, I took, I followed the same path and I became a Mary Kay um, independent beauty consultant. And so, you know, I'm a, I'm an avid, I'm an advocate for good skincare. Um, I'm an advocate for, you know, looking your very best. Um, my mom really instilled in us to always look your best because you never know who's watching. Um, and even if you don't do it for the other people, do it for yourself. When, when you look good, you feel good. <laughs> yeah, do it for yourself. So really, um, that's where my intrigue and beauty came from. Um, and it just kind of stemmed from there, just kind of snowballed from there, um, getting into makeup, getting into looks, getting into styles. And once I was old enough, I was able to put the makeup on me. <laughs> um, and then so you just, just over the years, um, I kind of just went with it. And it's always been um, a part of my journey. Even when I tried to run away from it, it's always been a part of my journey, so. That's so good. And I like how you, you talk about the fact that there is a process, that there's always a process, no matter what, if you're going to school, if you're going to work, if you're going to, you know, wherever your place of worship is, if you're going to the grocery store, there's always some sort of beautification process. And the fact that you owe it to yourself to look nice, no matter where you are, you don't have to glam out every time you want to go somewhere, but you should go through a process of presenting yourself in a way where you're proud of the presentation absolutely absolutely that um just makes me think we talk 
over the years several times but um it's very important how you show up in the world like showing up is a thing like even if you don't show up you still showed up you just weren't ready um and um there's a research study that shows it takes seven seconds for a person to assess you it takes seven seconds for the brain to to make a determination about who you are and how you are based on your appearance yeah. So if all it takes is seven seconds, that's not a lot of time. So you want to make sure that you're making the best presentation because you only got a short, a short amount of time for that person's mind and their, their, their psyche to, um, you, you know, and definitely make that, that um, I guess, Im impression of you. Because no matter, if you think about people in your, in your life, no matter who they are now, no matter how they look today, you always remember what they look like, who they were when you first met them. Even if they've evolved and they're this awesome, great person now, you always remember your very first encounter, your very first interaction. So to me personally, it's very important to make sure that whoever encounters me always gets, you know, the best version that I can give for that day. That is true. It's true, thanks. And friends, because I can't always laugh when I say it. However, I mean, I was one who I took a lot of pride in how I looked and how I appeared in the world. And then I had my daughter and I started teaching and I just started looking like a teacher mom. And I would have, you know, wear my church clothes and it'd be okay. But, you know, I had this little up bun thing that I would, it was, now, considering when I look back on it, and now that I'm two years removed, I'm two years delivered, it was a tragedy. <laughs> and so, <laughs> I was looking like a tragedy and nobody had, the, nobody had the strength to tell me. However, one day, one of the elders at the time, or the elders elect at the time in our church, um, elder, at that time, elder elect Jessica Carter, she was, I was visiting with her and she said, you need to get Kiana to do your hair. And I said, okay. And it's exactly, and her sister, who's also, who's a stylist named Claudette, we love you, hello, signed off on it and said, yes. So I contacted Kiana and Kiana was, had already been my Mary Kay consultant. And so she just went about this process of helping me learn how to transform, not transforming me. That's critical because you said we can do it ourselves, but helping me learn how to transform. And then that coupled with me making, just making sure that I showed up in the world appropriately really took me through a transformation. And that's why you see the better version of me now, not the, not the front mom version, but the best version of myself I can be. So I owe a great deal to you for that, Kiana. Thank you for helping me to understand again how I was supposed to show up in the world. Oh, you're so welcome. You. Um, but, you know, I, I also want to add on to that is um, what I do, and I guess we can kind of pivot a little bit um, with the heart of a conversation with Healing Through Beauty is taking what you already have. If you don't need anything else to make you beautiful, we are fully equipped with everything that we need to be successful in life, to um, reach our optimal goals, to maximize everything that is out here for us to have. We already have it, we have it in us. And so really with like redefining, when I think about redefining the beauty, it's not taking it and making it something different. It's taking what you already have and polishing it up, cleaning it up, you know, maybe adding, you know, a little, you know, some sprinkles here and sparkles there, slap a little lipstick on it. And then bam, you have a brand new presentation. But like you said, Robinette, you're not a new person. You're, your essence and your authenticity is still there. It's you. It's just pulling out a better version of you. So I think that's really critical because um, a lot of times with people, especially um, with makeover, makeup, they think of makeover and it's changing you, but it's just changing how you're presenting yourself to the world because you're still you. Whoever you were before the physical transformation, like you're still that person. Now it does um, let creators take to another level of the hard work that has to happen on the inside, but you, it's easier to do the outside work first. And so that's kind of where we start and then we go through the process. Go through the process and what process you have been through. You, um, 
And I know you know that I'm going to ask this question. This is the <laughs> proper sequence. Okay. So I want to make sure that you're okay with it. Um, you lost your mother about four to four and a half years ago. And you recently lost your father last month, If for those who can imagine. So you've now lost both your parents and you are not even in the middle of your life yet. And how did you use beauty to, um, and your commitment to wellness to help you kind of sustain through those journeys? I know your mother's condition was more long-term and your father's transition was much more unexpected. However, you didn't let yourself falter in that regard in either one of those circumstances. How did you sustain through beauty? Um, really, it was, it, it did take work, um, but really it was kind of ingrained in me. Again, this whole idea of um, you have to show up, whatever your job, your task, the work has to get done. And so you have to do it. Um, and so for me, it was having to get up in the morning, having a routine um, that kind of kept me um, functioning and operating during the time. I'm um, just a little backstory. My mother um, suffered with scleroderma, um, which is um, a quick version if you all are familiar with like sclerosis of the liver it's a hardening of the tissue well um scleroderma affects your connective tissues and your entire body is a connective tissue all your tissues are connected and so um this disease it attacks your body it attacks your autoimmune system um and really there's nothing that doctors can do for it um outside of hiv aids and cancer like this is one of the things that they have no clue what to do with all they can do is treat the symptoms. And so this disease affects your body. It can change the coloration of your skin. So, you know, mind you, I told you my mom's like this glam girl, you know, so her skin changed. She went from being my complexion to being spotted to being light. Um, you know, it changed her body and it changed, um, it affected her, her lungs. Her lungs were scarred inside. And so, you know, it was a lot that happened there and having to, um, as the eldest daughter, you know, still operate and function um, while this was going on, still making sure that family, the family still flowed because we had this huge big blow and no one was expecting it no one knew what to do with it it was all very new for all of us especially my mom um, being able to have a daily routine just something as simple as getting up getting dressed and put my I, I call it putting my face on or putting my war paint on you know it's just like a, it's just like an athlete when they got to get up for the game it's a process they, they get their music in their ears, they, they get into their zone, they do whatever they have to do to prepare themselves to get out on the field, to execute the plays, to, um, to oppose the other team. For me, in my mind, I took that same approach with it, um, but I used it through beauty because I ain't out here and playing a football or nothing like that. Um, but for me, having that routine of getting up, getting ready, and being consistent with it because there were days where I just didn't want to. Like, quite honestly, you know, just to kind of put perspective, my mother, who was like everything to me, was dying before our eyes, and there was nothing that we could do about it but try to make her as comfortable as possible, you know, and this wasn't like a quick thing. This happened, it, it, it by the time we realized what it was, it took probably about another eight years, but it happened probably happening for at least enough seven to 10 years prior, we weren't aware. So you're looking at like a huge gap of time where your loved one is deteriorating. And for most of that time, you weren't aware and that there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, there, there were days where I just didn't want to do. There were days where I cried about it, but then I had to get it together because <laughs> I still had to go to work. Mom still needed things. My sister and my father still needed stuff. So really it was... Um, Gosh, it was really just grit. It was a grit that was um, built up in me over my lifetime. But at that point, that's what I needed. And the, the way that I was able to express that was through, through makeup. The way that I was able to express that was through making sure. I was very intentional about making sure I didn't look like what I was going through. Because it was extremely tragic. It was very devastating. Very easily could I have given up. So I want to deal with this. I got too much going on at home. I got too much life. Ain't nobody got time for no hair. Ain't nobody got time for no makeup. Like, and I would have been well within my rights. Um, but I remember the teachings of my mother. 
you know, even through her sickness, like my mama was the cutest sick little thing you would have ever saw. <laughs> she was adorable. I mean, sure, she was cute the whole time because it, it, it's, um, I wish I could articulate it a little bit better, but it, it was just in me that I had to show up because there, there's a strength in showing up against adversity. Um, instead of looking at what happens to you as affecting you, you affect it. Flip that thing around. Um, you know, when our former pastor said, have your season serve you, you know, and it's very, very true. Like whatever you're going through, you don't have to be a victim of it. And so um, what I did is I used beauty in that way to help me navigate because it just gave me something to do. Um, during that time period, I was very active um, as a Mary Kay consultant. So it gave me a schedule. It gave me time to compartmentalize and the process as I was going through this difficult time. Um, so that helped me um, through the healing process twice over, honestly, because there were two periods of grieving. Um, there was a period I was grieving my mother as she was dying, because she was still here. And then I had to go back and revisit it because I had to grieve her after she passed away. And, and through that time, I used um, keeping a daily routine, you know, getting up, taking a shower, washing your face, picking out your clothes, getting dressed. I used those things because I still had to go out and encounter the world. Like the world didn't care that I was going through this, quite frankly, you know, and I didn't want it to be a cloud or a shadow, neither did my family, because, you know, you, you never want to just wear that all the time. It's, it's burdensome. And so I use that to help help me mitigate that time. Um, and even now, like I'm currently going through it now. My father just passed away June 11th. Like it's still super fresh. You know, I have to process now daily a life with no parents, no parents, plural. You know, it was, it was kind of okay because I still have one. <laughs> um, but you know, the Lord saw fit um, for us to be another way. And so now I'm, I'm, understanding a new level of using um, healing, using beauty to help me heal through this process. You know, being intentional, making those decisions, showing up, even if it's, even if I'm running to the grocery store, I'm not just gonna run out the house looking like anything. You know, put a little mascara or something or just to wake it up because for me, that lets me know that everything's okay. Even if it's not all the way okay, it's going to be all right. And so I hope that makes sense. But that's, you know, I kind of use those things to help me navigate very, very difficult times in my life. That makes a lot of sense because it, I was, as you were speaking, I was processing and thinking, and you were talking about there are two phases. There were two phases of grief that you went through with your mother. And I know in personal conversation, I hope you don't mind me sharing, your family was saying, you know, how grateful you were that you didn't have to go through those two phases with your father. You only went through one phase because it is having dealt with that, not with a parent, but very, with a very close grandparent who helped raise me. It was an 11 year process for us and watching them. And you had, and, and I mean, it is my personal experience. I had to, and I know you would echo this, I had to show up for my grandmother. You have to show up for your mother. If you started looking like the turmoil you were feeling, then that doesn't give them a reason to keep going and mm -hmm. keep fighting. And then she'll, you know, and it was a way to say, now she is doing what I taught her to do. She is carrying out the legacy that I have given her. And one thing that, especially in the African-American community, at least not even a full generation removed, you never leave the home looking like circumstances and situations because our four parents went through so much. And one thing they always did was they showed up. If they had one suit, they took good care of that one suit and that one pair of shoes. You know, now we're in a phase, we're in a a reality where people can just buy what they want but we come from a history of people who walk around with pride and how we appear and show up in the world and so for us i would also say that it's a part of the, the legacy that you leave you owe it not only to you owe it not only to yourself to continue the fight to continue your healing but you owed it to your mother and your grandmother and your great grandmother to show up in the world the way they taught you to do it um, and in doing it, then you were able to reach a level that said, all right, Kiana, you got your war paint on. All right, girl, step on out and you can keep on keeping on. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think in just kind of continuing on thinking about just that process that what you said is so very true. Um, if I let what I looked like my family, and it wasn't just me, like my entire family was going through this. So you had four different people experiencing the same trauma and it manifesting in different ways. Um, but at that time, like, you know, you know, thanks be to God that I was the one who was, you know, sane enough <laughs> to be able to navigate for each, to be that, that, that calm, that middle ground for each person. But like for my mother in particular, um, I think it was very important because it was, we had such a, a, a close relationship. Like we were so, like, I mean, attached to the hip, you know, so it was, I, if she was hurting, I could feel the pain, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so I think for me, it was important to let her know that I'm okay. So you can be okay because I'm okay and don't worry about it. So it, it, even though it seems very trivial, it's like, okay, you're making your face up. Okay. You're putting on cute clothes. Okay. You went and got your hair and your nails done. No, that's the thing. That's self care. And you know, you have to, my mother was always taught before you take care of anybody else, you have to take care of yourself. You can't pour out of an empty vessel. And so it's very important to be intentional and take that time, even if it's 20 minutes in the morning, to take care of yourself, to make sure that you are on and you are ready so that you can attack and go at everything else that life has to, that life throws your way and that the responsibilities that you have. And so I just think like, if I looked like how I felt, you know, the situation may not have lasted longer. My mother's doctor said that she lived longer than any of them expected. And it was because of how we took care of her. It was because of how we kept her up. She never went to a doctor's appointment looking a mess. Okay. Not if I had anything to do with it. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it just, I just wanted to just echo what you said. It really, really matters. It really, really matters how you show up for other people, especially when they have an expectation of you. When you set a standard for yourself, even when life happens, you can't fall under that standard. And even if you do, don't fall under that standard for a long time. You know, feel your feelings, but get back up. We fall down, but we get back up. It builds resiliency in you, um, which is very important. That's so good, Kiana. And this is this conversation is not just for women. We want to make sure that we're very clear about that because it is something where men, you have to show up in the world as well. Parents teach your children how to show up in the world, especially, and I know I continue to go back. It's not necessarily a color line issue, but as early as 1903, W.B. Du Bois was saying the problem of the 20th century is the problem of the color line. And we already know that in the time such as this, the problem of the 21st century is the problem of the color line. And we already know that being young um, or being male and being brown, there's already a preconceived notion that will convict before it grants grace in our systems. And so you wanna also make sure that your sons and your husbands are presenting their best selves, not only for not for the outside world, but for a preservation of their own dignity and to appear in the world in such a way where you are fearless. And you have one thing that Cornell West said, he wore the same outfit almost all the time. It's a black suit with a white shirt and a black tie with his hair out with flags on it. He would always say, I have my war paint on. I'm wearing, I'm not my war paint, I'm my war suit on. I'm wearing my war suit. This is my suit of warfare. And I'm wearing it and he wore the same, it looked like the same kind of outfit every day for that reason. He would come and he would be sharp, he would be clean, he would be crisp, he would be dapper, and he would be bright. And he would come ready um, to appear in the world. So this is not just something where you heal yourself, but you can actually change the conversation by appearing, by showing up as your best self. You change, you change the conversation that's in your mind, and you change the conversation that other people have about you. It's so very true. We'll stop. I don't even really think I'll say that. Like it, it's it's so very true. I, I have a funny a funny story. <laughs> um, as I was going through, like it was just one of those days. And let me tell you, I'm not perfect. Like I try every day. Some days I just didn't quite hit that mark. And I went through like a phase, maybe like a few weeks, where I was like, I am not doing this makeup stuff. And I went to work one day. <laughs> And I, did, I didn't have my war paint on. You know, I was still, my face was clean, I'm cute. Um, but I did not have my war paint on. And I work in a predominantly female office. There was one man, 
one man and he would never say anything about how he looked like everything but one day i walked in the office and he came back and he said is everything okay <laughs> you said that yes I said, is everything okay? and i said what do you mean he said you just you, you look you look like it's a little different and, I, and from that moment on i was yes. like never again <laughs> you look like you're going through the stuff oh this thing is for real so y'all it really matters because you don't even think about how people see you people view you and you have your expectations of yourself but people have an expectation of you based on what you show them so how you interact with people how they interact with you how they communicate with you the, the relationship that you have it starts with you it's not the other person people will only treat you the way you allow them to people will only see you the way you show them who you are which is why it's so important to 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 do the work and be your best self and it may seem like oh that's a whole lot to do every day it really isn't it really isn't if you establish a system it's about systems find a system that works for you and work that system be consistent so if it looks like i got 20 minutes in the morning before i gotta get out the house if you only got 10 of those 20 minutes to do some self-care Find a way that you can get your hair done, makeup done, clothes, whatever it has to do, or do the prep work before so that when that's 20 minutes, that's your time and that's your system and work it every day and it will work for you. It's just, it really is as simple as that. I, I'm a living witness. It is as simple <laughs> as that. I just don't know how else to say it. It literally is as simple as that. So many people, as you mentioned, knew you as or know you as their Mary Kay lady. They're Mary Kay consultants, and um, but you have started a new venture, a new life venture called Beauty Redefined. So tell us a little bit about Beauty Redefined and what it is and what you hope to accomplish through it. Yes. Yeah, so um, my new my new baby um, that I'm carrying, new career venture is Beauty Redefined LLC. This is my um, it's a lifestyle um, branding company that um, I'm so excited. I'm very passionate about, and it stemmed from my life and my lived experiences with with beauty. And um, about a year and a half ago, was it me? About probably about a year and a half ago, I kind of started toying with the idea of of branching out, doing something different. I'm still related to makeup, um, but I always I also wanted to be able to help people um not just to give makeovers because you can go get a makeover anywhere but i really really wanted to be able to use the tools and techniques and tips um that i had with beauty but to help um to dig deeper and and go under the surface and help people to really really um do that heart work and do do that emotional work that helps because beauty is not just on the outside it's it's on the inside and so um i was thinking okay well um, one of my, my business mentors was having a conversation and he came up with this, this concept and I was like, redefining beauty, like how, what does that look like? And so I went on the, the journey of, of, of figuring out and birthing this business and here we are with Beauty Redefined. Um, my, my purpose in Beauty Redefined um, is to um, help women and, um, and everyone really in general, but specifically women, um, to become the best versions of themselves using education, using um, beauty products, using knowledge and information to become the, the best you you can be. Um, whether that looks like having to rebrand yourself you know i am having even currently to rebrand myself because as robin has stated you know i'm the mary Kay lady <laughs> you know and i'm like i'm more than just that i'm more but but that was my brand my people knew when they needed skincare they needed color cosmetics they could come to me when they need um skincare tips and techniques and makeup tricks and stuff i was the person people would call they may not call me for anything else but they, if they had a, a, a bump on their face, my phone was ringing because they wanted to know how to get rid of it. So now I'm going through a process, it's, it's true. <laughs> I, I'm going through a process of having to rebrand myself. And as women, we go through this um, throughout our lives. It's very cyclical. I think now, like I'm in my 30s, you know, I won't give it all away, but I'm in my 30s. Um, you know, every 10 years, every seven to 10 years, our bodies change, life changes. And so we have to now um, find a new way to be 
So you have to, you're constantly recreating yourself, whether you think so or not. And so if we're going to constantly be recreating ourselves because of life circumstances, because of environmental factors, because of family dynamics, whatever the case may be, let's be intentional about it and have, and, and, and have control over that thing. Let's, let's establish a pattern and say, this is what we're going to do. Because once you, once you are aware of it and you know that it's happening, then when the cycle comes and it changes, it won't catch you off guard. And so with, with Beauty Redefine, what I really want to do is to help women have that sense of self, that sense of mind um, to say, okay, these things are happening. I'm going through these transitions. These changes are happening. Um, but I still can look my best. I still can be beautiful. I still am who I once was. This is just a better version of me. Um, so that's pretty much what I want it to be. Um, definitely helping people establish, you know, a new lifestyle a new way of being. And when it comes time to rebrand yourself, even if even if, if you're a soccer mom, soccer moms need to rebrand. Mm -hmm. If you're the entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs definitely have to go through rebranding phases with your business. If you're in ministry, ministry, you have to rebrand everything. It, and, and you may not look at it as rebranding, but that's what it is. And that's what I'm here for. <laughs> oh, I love it. And it's, it's so true. I, I, I love, there's several takeaways that I, I really like from what you said. And thank you for allowing me to also be in mommy mode. I'm very sorry for having oh, this story. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you know, our shared child. <laughs> However, um, a couple of things that I really like that you highlighted. One is that you, you were talking about the cyclical pattern of life, that there's going to be a new phase. There's, there's bound to be a new phase every seven to 10 years. And I love how you said, you, even though you know, you know it's coming, you might not know everything about that new phase, but you don't want to be caught off guard when it comes. And by caught off guard, meaning completely unprepared in all this disarray. And I love how you said even, because when you said soccer moms, I was like, now that is the truth because your child is not gonna be, you're not gonna be busting the child around with your, with your minivan. Y'all know how to talk about minivan. But then your little soccer mom minivan, you know, <laughs> your whole life. At some point, that child is going to go off to college. And so who is this? You're going to be an empty nester. Who are you going? Who is this person going to be? And how do you prepare yourself for that? For branding, I mean, there's so many different great, brand, great companies, and they have all gone through a rebranding process. No one company just keeps it the same. Even Pepsi, even with the minutia to the point where you don't even have to write the name anymore, you know the you know what it looks like. But there were very various different iterations of what that looks like and what the audience was before you know those brands got it right. So I love the fact that you would be here for those different cycles and seasons to help people of multiple backgrounds and generations and ages um, to go through those cycles in a healthy way. In a healthy way. Um, and so what can your what can your your clients or your future clientele, your current clientele and your future clientele, what are some things that they can expect from Beauty Redefine in the coming weeks and months? Um, and also how might they be able to place any kind of advanced orders for those things? But first things first, what is next or what is now for Beauty Redefined? Oh, what is next? What is now? Everything is next to now. <laughs> Everything is next to now. But let's give some language to the next to now. Though. Everything. So um, right now I'm working on launching all of my on, on my online platforms. So um, you can find me at Beauty Redefine LLC at Facebook.com. You can find me on Instagram at Beauty Redefine LLC. And so right now I'm working on launching my website. Um, so that I have a place, so that I have a home for people who are interested to find out more in detail where they can go. Um, so in the next next coming weeks, um, I'll be launching a website for Beauty Redefined. Um, I'm also in the process of developing um, beauty products, um, a beauty product, so I'm going to start with one, <laughs> um, that will be um, an item and, and um, that my, my customer base, my community um, can purchase. So I, when I think about products, I said I want to offer three things, product, um, education, um, and then we want to also do knowledge. 
And so um, it's always been a threefold. Even when I was brainchilding this in my notebook, it was always threefold. Um, there was always going to be some type of product. So lipsticks, think beauty care, body care type of products is what you'll start to see from Beauty Redefined. Um, and then we're talking about education. So there'll be workshops and um, online uh, workshops, whenever we can get back in person, in-person workshops, things of that nature, speaking engagements, things where we can engage with one another and really actually together as a community work through whatever, work through this whole idea of, of redefining ourselves. Um, and then with education, providing tools, providing um, forums, providing panelists um, um, experiences where we can become more educated um, yes, in beauty, yes, in healing, um, but in, in other things as well, those adjacent things that, that surround the concept. Um, so those are the things that you can look forward to, so keep an eye out. Um, I'm working diligently, trying to get this content out, content, oh, content, yes, I have a YouTube page, ding. <laughs> I, I have a YouTube if you forgot to say it, it's okay. <laughs> It was like, aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I do have a YouTube page that I'm building out. It's going to be called Beauty Redefined TV, where um, you'll get to see a more relaxed uh, version of what, what I would present. Um, there will be videos and information and, you know, um, conversations like this will be on the YouTube channel so that um, that community can come, can come together and interact with one another um, in a virtual environment and we can just continue to be there for one another. Um, so those are some things that you can look forward to um, in the coming weeks, coming months, rolling out a lot. Um, very excited, it's keeping me very busy, <laughs> keeping me up at night, but I love it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really, really, really excited. Welcome to the third world of entrepreneurship, darling. Yes. It is a, it's a, it's a, yes, exactly. And so for those of you entrepreneurs you need to keep your skin straight and your smile good because we've been up all night. Can you please see Kiana Nelson? I think we get it like three o'clock and I was up at like nine. <laughs> It's well worth it. It's well worth it. And the product we know because you already have a proven history of skincare knowledge. So we know that what you're going to put out, we can trust that for all skin types. And I know that you had kind of a, a person in mind when you were thinking of when you were thinking of some of your products. So can you tell us a little bit about her? Absolutely. So, you know, as I'm thinking about business, I'm like, who is this for? Like, who is this person? And so her name is Monica. Um, Monica is a 29-year-old African-American um, woman. She is a high achiever. She is um, trendy. She's tech savvy. She's active in her community. She volunteers. Um, she has a 40-hour a work week. She works for a corporate America, or she could be an entrepreneur, or she could do both. You know, she's kind of a I want to say a renaissance woman in that way, uh, but Monica is also an influencer in her friend circle and her family and in her personal community. Um, she is the first uh, generation of her family um, to go to college and to excel and to get higher education. Um, she's aware of what's going on. Um, with um, social issues and with the government and how local, state, federal government affect her family and her community. So she's very aware. She has a little activist type of, you know, a little vibe going on there. Um, she's a naturalista, um, but she she's um, an all around good person. She has a faith base, which is important, I believe. Um, she has healthy relationships, um, but Monica is at a point in her life that things are changing and things are shifting and she's in a transition. And so as much as she's accomplished and she's achieved, now she's in a new arena. And so now she is at level one of this new stage in life. And so she's trying to find her way through while continuing to have that, you know, high achieving attitude and mindset about her. Um, and so she knows that, yes, she's accomplished much, but there's much, much more to be had. And so um, she, she's ready to take it on, but a very 
um, poignant part about her is Monica has experienced some tragic loss and grief in her life that through all of her, her successes and high points, she's had some low points and she's had to learn how to navigate her way through it. And so um, when I think about Beauty Redefined, I think about the person who I want to help. I think about Monica. You know, she has so much going for herself, has gone through so much, um, but still is looking up. She hasn't let it, you know, keep her down. She hasn't let the storm clouds, you know, cloud her vision. Um, she's ready and willing to accept what's coming next. And she's going at it with all that she has. So that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> I like Monica. I know, and she's cute too. She's adorable. She's very relatable. <laughs> she's, that's a very relatable storyline to a lot of people. <laughs> A lot of people. I I think we've all had a bit of Monica Monica moments mm -hmm. in our lives. Even if you know, even if we're 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 not you know we're men. I think that we've all had moments where we have reached a period where we're uncertain and we're in transition, but we're confident about ourselves in the world. And even for those who are not necessarily like Monica, who have been. Um, who are not who don't possess her confidence or her intellect or her skill set this is a very good step a very good step in getting to know you and getting to know yourself and getting to know what works for you and feeling stronger literally from the inside out healing from the inside out so of course you know beauty is not just skin deep it is something that radiates internally to externally and then what you put on top of this beautiful creation only magnifies that beauty and so i would encourage you and implore you encourage you and implore you to allow um to allow kiana and beauty redefine to help you reach that next level pull it out of yourself get to the next level in entrepreneurship, the next level in education, the next level for that interview, the next level of healing, the next level of wholeness. I mean, really, it is, a, it is about the complete person. This is a part of it, but it is very important. It is integral to be healed and from the inside out. And I'm so grateful, Kiana, that you decided to take this on as a part of your mission and your mantle because you're a perfect example of what it is to press through and to allow beauty to help you heal. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Definitely, definitely appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I really do. Um, you know, Robin is a great, great friend to me beyond this conversation. Um, but it, it's very important. And I guess, I don't even know where our time is, but <laughs> um, I guess, you know, um, to close out, you know, it's, yes, it's important to make sure that your external self set is, is up and you're ready to go. You got your war paint on, you, you put your face on or whatever, you put your suit what have you. Um, but if you're not okay inside and if you're not beautiful inside and if you don't feel whole, because we're not broken. There may be, I heard today, <laughs> there was them, we're not broken, but there are broken areas in our lives. And so if there's some broken areas in your life, then let's fix it. You know, it takes time. It takes work. Um, it's not always going to be fun and it's not always going to be easy, but it's worth it and it's beneficial. And what you are and how you feel on the inside always manifests on the outside. You can dress it up, but it's very important to do that internal work. Um, so I guess we're going to close with that. You know, be, be intentional in all areas of your life. Take care of yourself. If you cannot take care of yourself, you can't be there for the people in your life. You can't be there for yourself if you don't take care of yourself. Um, so love on yourself so that you can be here to love on those um, who you're called to um, in your life. That's it. I think that's perfect. I think that's perfect. So everyone, make sure that you follow Beauty Redefined. You connect with Beauty Redefined on all the platforms. Facebook, Instagram, um, Beauty Redefined TV on YouTube. Uh, make sure that you, you, if you have questions, reach out to 
Kiana Nelson uh, personally. She is very personable, quite sweet. I will say, just like I said with every other interview, please respect her time. Um, if you have a legitimate question and a need, please make sure that you come clear with your need and she will be able to help you meet that. Let her help you grow and elevate. And if it's something that's greater than the capacity of redefining the beautiful and healing from the inside out, if then she's also equipped to help refer you um, to a location that can give you the help that you need. So thank you so much again, Kiana, for joining us today. Uh, healing Through Beauty with Kiana Nelson. Thank you all so much for tuning in. God bless you. God keep you. Have a phenomenal rest of your day. Take care, family. Bye. Bye. We did it. We did it.